dark spirit, man. And oh, yeah. Yeah, so y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, man, yeah. listen, I relate to your story so much. Even yeah. when you talk about how, you know, what you saw in your father and not wanting to be like that. Yeah. And then f finding out that you became just like that later. Do you understand? Oh, my God. Do you understand, yeah. oh, man? man? That's like a, that's like a, that's like a, that's like a shock to your whole, to your whole system, man. You got to do a whole lot of rewiring, man. And I, my thing is, I think a lot of people know they need help where they go to get help is just as important as knowing you need help mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you know what i mean so therapists and all that stuff i think that i think that's all is great but i like to go to the source i like to go to the creator and i believe god is the creator of all of us if you don't turn to god man you'll get a band-aid you'll get medicated but the real healing is in jesus christ i believe in god and therapy me too me and, too. And plant-based medicine. And healing. And meditation. Okay. And okay. Right, 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 right. Okay, I agree, I agree, I agree. I agree. I agree. You forget that he's supposed to be praised, but now he praise you and all Period. that type of stuff. So yeah, I see a lot of Instagram pages out there, but you know it is what it you is. You killed it. You killed that whole thing. I think a lot of pastors were not called the pastor. They just, you know, study, you go to school, and then you just become a pastor, like you become a manager at, you know, Publix or something yeah. like that. <laughs> and that's that's unfortunate for a lot of people who invest their, you know, money, time, attention, and their soul into people who they believe are literally called from God. I don't believe uh, a lot of pastors are. I think I think it's a system now of God. It's a system. Everything is a system, and systems work with or without God. Mm -hmm. So I think the institution of church is whack. I mm -hmm. think how church is ran is whack. I think the religious system and structure is whack. I don't subscribe to it, even though I grew up in it, I benefited from it, but I learned that God is not the church. People of God, if you do not know what this show Wild and Out is about, that Ty Tribble was on just last year, this show was filled with profanity filled skits, sexual immorality, innuendos, debauchery, and the works of the flesh are on 1000. And for any person who claims to be a follower of Christ or a gospel musician, they're only seeking one thing when they go on that show, and that's the world's approval because they love the lust of the eyes, the flesh, and the pride of life. And to do so, to go on that show, you have to deny Jesus Christ. Okay, people of God, uh, <clears throat> want to definitely address this real quick. You know, many of you that's on this channel, of course, that tune in from time to time, whenever I put a video out, uh, you already know what my stance is on uh, this whole Thai trivia thing that's circulating. Um, but it's, it's just confirming what the word of God says. You know, there's a great falling away that takes place and we're seeing that especially in America uh, with a lot of so-called, you know, the celebrity, gospel artists, whatever. It, 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 one thing that is a pattern that I'm, I'm, I'm noticing is that a lot of these guys, when they are no longer big in the gospel music industry, all of a sudden they become pastors. Um, They've entertained, you know, dud gospel music and, and Ty Trivet back in the day was, you know, it seems like when they when they're humble, they start off pretty pretty good, you know, uh, very creative um, songs, you know, blessing people and everything. However, when they, as as the as the momentum starts going and and the and the stage gets bigger, the lights gets brighter. Uh, you start seeing, you know, the compromise coming in. And I know he did a video at one time talking about he wasn't bound down to the industry anymore. Uh, I think he was referring to the gospel music industry. Of course, it has its flaws, but that doesn't mean every gospel artist is a hypocrite or is someone that is going, you know, uh, that doesn't have a sincere heart to serve the Lord. And that is what's happening a lot of times is that people are trying to paint the the body of Christ, the church, you know, in itself or with the same brush uh, because of their personal experiences in their home, which is what he alluded to at the beginning of the interview. I didn't, I'm not going to play the whole entire interview. Uh, well, I didn't, but you can, you know, if you feel like seeing it, you go see it on your own time, whatever. But a lot of stuff that he was referring to was things that he grew up under his parents, you know, the things that he experienced with his parents. So, and the Bible specifically tells us to honor our father and mother. You know, as parents, you know, we don't do everything right all the time. I definitely won't be putting out my parents, you know, 
uh, dirty laundry on social media or on some kind of radio program or whatever, that's disrespectful. Uh, the same way, you know, you wouldn't want your children becoming adults doing that to you, you know. Uh, so I think that that is that was in itself was 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 disrespectful. Uh, even when uh, Noah, when his son, one of his sons saw him naked, his other sons came and covered him up. They didn't want to have that image. They didn't want to, you know, to to see their father in that in that condition like that. Uh, however, the other one saw it and blabbed it off and everything else. But um, so what happens is that people try to paint the whole, you know, uh, the. Uh, church with the same brush and saying the church is whack and the church institution. I think he's trying to refer to certain institutions of the church and what he's experienced. So, um, but regardless, uh, you got to understand some people, God, no matter what ministries or churches have done things wrong, God is not doing away with the church at all. As a matter of fact, the entire new Testament you see after the gospels is written to churches. Church of Acts, the Church of Antioch, the Church of Corinth, the Church of Ephesus, you know, and the list goes on. You got seven churches in in Revelation, you know, that that the uh, the uh, that Jesus Christ is is addressing and speaking to. Okay, and I'm I'm just I'm I'm kind of jump ahead a little bit, but I'm gonna say this because this is there's this I don't know social media trend or this mindset that people are saying that well we are the church. Uh, no, we're not. As individuals, you're, you're, you're not the church. The Bible says that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. That means you're a vessel for the Holy Spirit to operate in. Okay? That's how you become born again. You're a vessel. All right? So you honor God with your body. Now, when it comes to the church, it specifically says that God puts some of the church first, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints to do the work of the ministry. The saints are who we are. If you're not a leader, you're not a pastor, you're not an apostle, you're not a prophet, evangelist, you are, a, you, all of them are saints of God, but you are a child of God. You are a saint. As a matter of fact, you don't see in the book of Revelation where one person, you know, when you see all the, you know, the, um, the people in Revelation chapter seven, they wash their robes, you know, white and and, and 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 remove themselves from the world or, or whatever did not become tainted with the world and stuff it calls them people of god saints of god it does not call anybody an individual the church so all of this stuff that people are saying that they we are the church a lot of times that's out of rebellion and 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 some people just want to you know forsake assembling themselves with the brethren at the church they don't want any accountability you know, if you if, if you are the church, show a scripture in the Bible where it identifies one individual <clears throat> as the church. Even, <clears throat> excuse me, when Peter, when Jesus Christ told Peter, he said, Peter, when you know, who do men say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ. He said, Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father did. Then he says to Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church. He didn't say, Peter, you are the rock that I'm going to build my church on. He didn't say, Peter, you are the church at all. You don't see that. As a matter of fact, when you look in um, Matthew chapter 18, verse 17, Jesus Christ talked about a, a, a brother who sins. And in verse uh, 16, it says, but if he will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, regard him as you would a pagan or a tax collector. So that's Jesus Christ is telling, you know, his disciples, his apostles, how to handle situations, you know, how to handle things when it comes to a sinning brother. And so then he tells them, truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will, will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. In other words, whatever you judge, okay, whatever you don't allow, whatever you restrict to bind some means to tie it up. To restrict it, okay. To lose something is to is to release something that was held back, though that was bound, okay. Or what? Or, or or allow something, all right. So this what Jesus Christ was dealing with, but he 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 specifically says to the church, he was not talking about individuals, he was not talking about just a group of people, all right. Because in the church we see even the apostle Paul lays out the foundation. If any man does, when he talks to Timothy, if any man desires the office of a bishop, well, how are you going to desire the office of a bishop? 
Who are you gonna bishop? Who are you gonna shepherd? That means pastor. So who are you gonna who are you gonna shepherd? All right. And so that way, you anybody that's, that desires that office, Paul was actually establishing, you know, the, the the government within the church, and telling Timothy to select elders, to select bishops, you know, to to have these bishops. These are the qualifications of people that are supposed to lead the people of God. As a matter of fact, he said, if a man cannot even govern his own household well, how can he be over the things of God? How can he lead the people of God? All right. So uh, all of this stuff about people saying, you know, we're the ecclesia, you know, yes, we're the called. I want to mean the God when, when Christ uh, saved us, even the, the, the New Testament reveals that, that you've been called out of darkness into his marvelous light, into his marvelous light of Jesus Christ being born again. All right. Those, you know, who, who named, who named the name of Christ shall depart from iniquity. You know, come out from amongst them, be separate, says the Lord. All these different scriptures is talking about not for, for the believer not to adapt or conform to this world. All right. So every it, it, it's something that people say, well, I'm the church. Or I can have church in my home. Listen, you're not having church at your home. All right. Because you gather with other saints of God and everything. That don't mean you the church because of the, the, the word of God always already listed. What what the uh, what the uh, what the uh, the order of what the order will be in a church? You have to, there has to be a pastor, there has to be a leader that leads a congregation. All right. When you look at the uh, in the book of Acts, look at what Peter did. Look what the apostles did. It says as they begin to preach and teach the people, it says that three thousand souls were added to the church. Well, how were they the church? Because there was a leader there. There was an apostle there. And it says specifically, they gave, they, they broke bread. They have all things in common, fellowship with one another, taking heed to the apostles doctrine. And what did the, the, the word of God just say? God put some of the church first, apostles, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And so you, you got at the beginning of everything, after the day of Pentecost, in the book of Acts, you see the, the apostle Peter and the, the, the apostles there teaching the people the word of God. Teaching the people the word of God. It says the church, they, the, the church grew with 3,000 souls. All right? Who do you think the apostle was writing to in the book of Corinthians? When he was talking about if there's a if there's if the, he who prophesies edifies the the, uh, the 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 people the church but he who he who uh, speaks in tongues edifies himself he said if there's any believe, any uh, unbeliever that comes in the midst of you all right he will know that the spirit that that that, that God is with you okay so he was not talking about if he comes in the midst of, of, of you know of, of you as an individual because you're the church. No, he was writing to the church of Corinth. These churches were named after the locations that they were in. All right. So all of this talk about you know the you know the, oh, I am the church. Just, no, you're not. You're a child of God. You're part of the body of Christ. All right. So when we we hear these things, you know, even when Christ returns, it didn't say he was he was he was taken out, you know, uh, uh, millions of millions of churches because of the individuals. No, it's the body of Christ. It's the saints of God. That's why in Revelation, when you see the people that were that were martyred and everything, you see how they're called saints of God. Okay, you see them being called saints of God. He's not talking. He didn't call individuals the church. So when people sit up here and, and say stuff like that, it's to get people to really rebel because, it, listen, look, if you're the church, then who holds you accountable? Where's your accountability at? When you get off or you make a mistake, you teach or say the wrong thing, whatever you do, get off in the city, who holds you accountable? Yourself? Because when you join the church, you join a local uh, 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 assembly of believers with a with a with a pastor and apostle, you know, uh, leading that ministry. That's where your accountability is at. That's where your accountability is at. Getting amongst the brothers and sisters of God, being led uh, by 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 a man of God that will teach and instruct people in the ways of righteousness. That will lead them, that will equip them uh, to deal with the things of this world, the issues of life, and to, to, to help perfect them to do the work of the ministry of Jesus Christ, then 
If you if when you if if you don't have that, then how are you the church and you don't even have that? When you when you're not connected like that, then how are you gonna get strengthened? How are you gonna get sharp? How are you gonna get corrected? How are you gonna be you know held accountable? Have that accountability? You just gonna rely on yourself because you got all fivefold ministry gifts in you, so you just govern yourself. That's a lie, and you can't show in the scriptures consistently where individuals were called the church. All right. So sometimes people will just want to, you know, they want to uh, uh, put that in there and they start getting off and saying things like that. But there's no biblical reference for it at all. All right. Even Jesus, the good shepherd, he's the he's, he's the pastor of the of the of the flock. All right. So when we when we see this stuff, people. It is uh, it's something that you just got to re really, you know, uh, uh, guard yourself because it's a lot of strange stuff out there. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to say what the word of God says about it, because you don't see uh, one, you know, you, you see that, like, again, the church of Thyatira, church of Philadelphia. OK, the, the, the church of Ephesus. All right. All these different all these different churches, because they were based on a location where the people of God gathered under a leader, under a leader. That's why when you look in the in the book of Revelation, you see to the angel of the church of Thyatira, to the angel of the church of whatever you want to call it, whatever, whatever is listed, excuse me, whatever is listed to the angel. He's talking about the messenger, the pastor of that church. All right. So, and then he started talking about the things that was going on in there, okay? So, let's you just get that cleared out. You, you're not the church, you know, you're a saint, you're a child of God, uh, and, 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 and that's good. That should be good good enough for you, okay? But anyway, back to this thing that Ty Trevor did. This whole thing that was, was going on, first and foremost, anytime these guys go on these shows, they never... They, they always come against the church because they want to tiptoe and they want to blend with the world. Now, Ty Trippie, he also, you know, took a picture with some drag queen looking dude. Uh, I don't know who, who it was, but he dresses like a woman and everything. But he taking pictures with him and stuff. So you, you, you see where these guys and these artists and stuff start. They, they start getting off. And some of these, you know, uh, leaders. Who, who who love the world? They start getting they they get get off because they always go on the breakfast show or these secular talk shows, and their first and foremost agenda, the first and foremost thing on their agenda to do, is to bash the church, to bash the people of God. Every time they refer to somebody being religious and rigid and everything, what they're basically saying is that they didn't like when people called them out according to the word of God, called them out on the things that they were doing that was compromising. That's, that's, that's what it is. That's what it's coming from. All right? So as much as the apostle Paul, as much as the apostle John and them had to deal with issues going on in the church, you had one incident where Paul said, hey, the, there's a sin going on amongst you that ain't even been named amongst the Gentiles. Even the, the heathens ain't even doing this. Well, you got a man marrying his mother's, his, his, his father's wife. OK, he just he said this is perverted. Then Paul had to address, you know, the, the Church of Corinth when they were dealing, you know, all the pride and stuff that they had because they had the spiritual gift because of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Paul had to address them. Then Jesus, through Apostle John in the book of Revelation, had to address the seven churches. And, and, and I would believe it, like two or three of them had some major issues in it. When you had Jezebel teaching the people of God to, you know, get involved in adultery, uh, you know, uh, uh, taking in things, and, uh, you know, uh, getting involved in fornications and doing all this other stuff, bringing the wrong doctrine in there. They, you know, the doctrine of Balaam was, was being brought into the church, the doctrine of the neck of the Lantans, all these different doctrines being brought in there. But not one one time do you see these apostles bashing the church talking about look the church is an institution the church is wrong they never did that they addressed the issues that were going on in there and they directed those ministries to repent they directed those ministries to do things according to the word of god to do things according to the doctrine that the holy spirit gave them but no what these guys do they want to go on these secular shows because they want to be with them. They want to be with the with the, with the world. 
That's why that whole, that, that dude Solomon, you know, uh, he said, you know, I can identify with so much stuff that you're saying. Yeah, because you can identify with the with the rejection, with the hurt or the disappointment. That's what's at the root of them. That's what's in their heart. When they get to blabbing off at the, about their fathers, about their parents and everything, running them down and stuff like that, that that's deep hurt. That's that hurt coming out. That's what you hear. It's, well, it's not coming out. It's still in them. But that's what you hear in, the, in, in their words. And then to sit up there and always they come against the church and, and stuff. They never come against the profanity, the blasphemy, the ungodly music that that breakfast club show is putting out, seducing and putting stumbling blocks before the people and causing them to stumble and fall into sin, lead them down a pathway to hell. They never come against that. But they're quick to come against the church. In other words, they're acting as if the world is the marker for the church to, to, uh, to, to, to aim for. And it's not. They do this every single time. Whether it's Kirk Franklin, Marvin Sapp, whoever it is. They get on these shows and the first thing they do is try to attack the body of Christ. Now, I agree with you, you know, some pastors are called and they, they, they shouldn't be up there because they went to seminary school, whatever, stuff like that. But the Bible says this, if any man desires the office of a bishop, it's desiring. So it ain't even, even a call, but it's even that desire when he desires to do something like that. Okay, so now when they get out there and they get to saying, you know, um, things like they like they're doing. Uh, when when he's, he, he's he's speaking against the church and speaking against this and and all this other stuff now one time and even and then you, you can hear on the interview when he said well you know I believe you know to go to the source to, to receive that healing to go to Jesus Christ to go to God and stuff and Charlemagne says well I believe in I believe in in God I believe in healing uh, in in uh in the uh little medical healing or whatever I believe in meditation I believe in this and then Ty Tripp said, well, I do too. I do too. And all of a sudden he starts, the moment that, that Charlemagne starts, you know, saying stuff that 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 uh, counters Ty Trippin, his name should be Ty Trippin because that's what he's doing now. The moment he he, he encounters what Ty uh, Trippin is saying, then all of a sudden Ty Trippin, oh yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I hear you. I hear you. Nonsense. Nonsense. You didn't want to stand your ground on that show. Because you're too busy conforming and trying to appease the world. And the Bible says, if I look to please man, I will not be a servant of God. I shall not be a servant of God. So he gets on there. And first and foremost, I don't understand how people, they should be on that show anyway. No no follower of Jesus Christ should be ever on these on that breakfast club show, on these secular talk shows, because you're not going on there to call them to repentance. Now, you sit up there and talk about Jesus Christ and stuff, but you are not going to address the sins that these talk shows and their hosts are promoting, deceiving people, black people, because that's who the majority of artists are for. You, you, you talk about you care about your people, care about the, your black people and all this black, this black, that stuff. But you got people out here that's, that radio shows like that, that is putting out filth, vulgarity, blasphemy all the works of the flesh and you don't say anything against it. You don't say anything against it at all. You just kind of go alongside, but you know what? The Bible says two can't walk together unless they agree. When the Bible says come out from amongst them, these artists and these, some of these pastors that go on the show, they, they, they do the opposite. They go in the midst of them and yoke up with them. What fellowship does, does a believer have with a non-believer? Absolutely none. The fact that somebody is on that show and he's got the title, he's got his own. If you ever see the Breakfast Club, you can probably see, you know, that on that little thumbnail or whatever. But uh, the host, the Solomon, the host, he has a throne that he sits on because he calls himself a God. Now, how is it that people who have, who are born again and follow Jesus Christ go on a show with a false God? And do interviews with him. And then cater and coddle to that, to that false guy. How is it that they go on that show saying that they, 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 they 
Jesus is, is the true and living God and, and, and God is real and everything. And you, you talk about the word of God. Now, how are you as, cause he's a pastor now, I guess. So how are you going to go and preach anything to that congregation when you stood right there in the midst of somebody that calls himself a God, which is nothing but an antichrist. And you sat there and you went right along with their whole, with their whole interview, making them feel comfortable in their sins. Making them feel comfortable in their sins. So what are you going to preach to your congregation? What kind of, what, what are you going to disciple? See, what happens is that because a lot of times when people, when these gospel artists, they're so used to getting accolades. They're so used to getting the applause. They're so used to getting all of these different, you know, uh, 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 invitations and everything to the Grammys, invitations to the BET Awards, invitations to the Dove Awards, invitations and get the, they're so used to that. To where now when that stuff starts dwindling down, all of a sudden, let's start a church. Let me start a church then. Because you won't get the same thing. Because guess what? Because of what he's done in the gospel music industry and his celebrity status. He's got that celebrity status. So when he starts a church, guess who's going to flock to him? People. Because they want to be connected to the celebrity. That's what it is. That's what's happening with the whole, you know, uh, Mike Todd thing and the, and, the, and the crazy stuff that he's always, you know, uh, doing. Well, he's a, he's a celebrity now because of those antics. And so people flock to him. They don't care what he's saying. They don't care about the double standard. They don't care. You know, you don't believe in hell and stuff and, and, and speaking against sin. They don't care about that. They want to be entertained. They want to be connected to the celebrity. And that's what's, that's what's taking place. So when someone sits up there and talk about this is whack, that's whack, but yet you all of a sudden you 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 talk about the, the the church, but yet you're you're passing the church. It's the same thing, you know. You you out there, you know these these uh uh some of these Christian rap artists or whatever that they call themselves and and gospel musicians and everything they they talk about the church and all this other stuff, but every time that they perform, they're performing in the church. They're performing before the people of God. So they talk about the very thing, but then go and perform for it. It's crazy. It's just like these, some of these ministers or whatever, or musicians, they talk about the world, but then go on the world's platform on these secular talk shows and TV shows and everything. And, and the thing is, is it, it makes them look so foolish because those TV shows actually confront them. And what do they do? They just backpedal. They become... They use these little philosophical answers to kind of go around, you know, go around the uh, the fire. They don't want to address things head on. And then one thing you won't see them do is quote scriptures. You won't see them say what the word of God says about the matter. You won't see them say anything. They're only going to give their opinion. They're going to give their views based off of their flesh and based off of what they know those radio interviewers want to hear. So this whole thing, the interview, is completely ridiculous. It didn't do nothing but show compromise. It didn't do nothing but show that he's willing to yoke up with the world and to go against what the word of God is saying. Didn't want to come for it. And this for anybody that ever went on there, you can apply this same thing to them too because they did not want to confront that this person is calling himself a God. You, you ignore that, but you want to go after the church or you want to put out what your pants was like. So... It is crazy. But you want to do all that stuff, but you're ignoring all the blasphemy and the profanity that they put out there on that radio show. And then he told the one girl, you was killing it, girl. You was, oh, you was killing, you was killing, killing what? Because they was coming against, you know, some of the stuff that pastors and stuff do. But you know what they don't do? They don't recognize the ones that's telling the truth and doing what's right. And doing what's right and exposing the industry on, on, on all points, whether it's the gospel music industry, secular music industry, and they're still promoting righteousness and holiness and following Jesus Christ. They're not talking about them. They won't, they, they won't talk about them because those are the ones that bring convictions. You're not going to talk about the ones that are speaking the truth because those are the ones gonna bring, that's going to bring the convictions. All right. And so what happened is that when you look at I like I like Bishop Woodard. I've seen some, you know, I've seen a lot of little uh, clips that he's been doing. Uh, like, of course, love Pastor G. Craig Lewis. You know what the stuff that he that he shares and he says, and there's uh, there's there's others that I've you know uh, uh, listened to, and it's a word that I mean that directly impacts me. 
But see, those are not the ones that are getting, you know, that are they, not that they want that stage or platform, whatever, but they stay in their lane. They do what the word of God says. And these talk shows like this and stuff like that. No, they ain't going to say nothing to them. They ain't going to say nothing about them. They're going to focus on the ones that's out here that's got the celebrity status that's doing food. That's who they focus on and try to say that this is what the church represents because of what they're doing. All right. And so it's it's completely ridiculous. And so many people are, you know, and it, I'm going to tell you the ones who defend Shy Trippin and what he said. These are people that are carnal. Every single last one of them, YouTube channels, social media, whatever you want, whatever media, social media platform. The only ones that are going to defend what Ty Trippin is saying are the ones that are carnal, are the ones that ain't living right. They ain't living righteous, but they look to point the finger at the church any chance they get to try to make it seem like that is their shield and that's their defense for why they don't go to church, why they don't follow Christ, why they don't even stay with the word of God. Because if you know the word of God, you know the things that Ty Tripp, what he just did on that show, went completely against the word of God. Everything that he, that he did, it went completely against the word of God. The moment he stepped foot into that door to sit down to do that interview, he was going against the word of God. Because he was not there to convert people. He was not there to lead the people to repentance. He was not there to, to, to minister the word of God to them because the Bible says be instant in season and out of season. Redeeming the times. All right? So when you go in the midst of sinners like Jesus Christ did, when Jesus Christ, when the apostle Paul, even apostle Paul, he went to, they had an altar uh, I forgot, I think it's in the book of Acts, but it says to the unknown God. And so you had these Greeks and stuff sitting up there, had an altar to a, to a false God. And Apostle Paul took that opportunity and started ministering to them and telling them about Jesus Christ. He didn't go in there and say, oh, yeah, man, that's a, that's, a, that's a pretty nice structure you got there. You know, tell me more about this. And, you know, just tell me more. The Bible says he, he stayed with them for, 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 for months. Okay, so reason with them, and then all of a sudden he left out of there. They want to get okay, fine. Then I gotta go. So these people, when you see the ones in the Bible, when they were do, when they were being interviewed, okay, by the Pharisees, when Peter and all them being interviewed by the Pharisees and stuff, talking about you know, didn't we tell you not to say this and uh, teaching Jesus Christ's name again? Didn't we tell you not to do this and stuff? And what did they do? They they say, hey, look here. You know what? Are we gonna obey? Are we gonna obey God or man? They didn't sit up there and compromise like, oh, you know what? Okay, for the sake of this interview, you know, because they were in it. They were they were drilling them pretty much, and that's what these secular shows do. They challenge the the person that says that they're a child of God. They challenge them openly on the interview, and so what these guys are doing on these interviews is they're cowering down to the challenge. But Peter and them they say, you know what? They didn't. They didn't. Peter and them didn't go. Well, you know what? Okay. uh, all right, we're, we're just going to say the higher power. We're just going to say, uh, since, you know, because we don't want to get beat and stuff. We don't want to get hit. You know, that, that's going to hurt a little bit. So we're just going to say um, whatever you want God to be. There's many paths to God. We, we, we'll, just, we'll just say that. We, we, we'll say whatever you want us to say. They didn't, they didn't do that, even when their lives were at stake. And so what you, this is what the Bible in the book of Revelation talks about, that outside the gate, the cowardly, the cowardly, being a coward when the word, when it's time for you to stand for the word of God, even in the midst of unbelievers and people that call themselves guys or these secular talk shows and radio programs, you when they ask you about the whole LGBT thing and, and you sit up there and cower down, well, that's not the only sin. No, 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 but, that, but that's the sin we they, that they're talking about right now. So address that. Well, there's, there's other things, you know, and, and, you know, I just want, you know, uh, the LGBT, they don't, they don't allow for the church. They don't allow for the church. No, they snuck, they got in there like about like a Trojan horse because people were too cowardly to address it and didn't want to deal with it. That's how that happened. Just like it's happening now. All right. But so this is what they do is that they, 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 they cower down. 
and they go along with the people just to get the applause and stuff like that. That's why they was all on the radio, you know, talk show, just laughing, chucking it up and everything is fine and dandy. Nothing about repentance, nothing about uh, turning to Christ, nothing about keeping your hands from this filthy, unclean uh, radio station that you're spewing this violence out there and deceiving. They always, they always plan the black card no matter what. It's always defending African-Americans no matter what is going on. Okay, so and, and and that's the problem is that they don't hold things. They don't do anything biblical. They don't do anything to the to to uh to the standard of the word of God. But then all of a sudden they want to throw some. They they throw a scripture out there, real quick, to try to make it seem like they're spiritual and they and they really not because their fruits and their actions show otherwise. And 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 this is the one also. <clears throat> Charlemagne is the one that T D Jakes. When T.D. Jakes had his little, his little talk show program, he interviewed him about his book and talked to him. And Solomon was talking about how he goes to T.D. Jakes and, you know, he gives an offering and everything like that. And so it, it, it's crazy. And But you sit up there, take that platform, knowing that multitudes of people are going to watch, multitudes of people are going to hear, and you don't say one thing against sin. The only thing they went on, they went on a rapid fire against the church, against you, against me, against anybody else that, that, that that's a part of the body of Christ, that's who Ty Tribbett went against. Because you know what? If he was your brother, he would defend, he would defend the body of Christ. And because the body of Christ is what Jesus Christ is coming back for, he will defend the church because you know good and well every church ain't out here clowning and doing ridiculous stuff. I don't care how many church funny videos is out there, whatever. But it actually, you know, you know, I, I used to watch them, I'll say about like a year ago and stuff. And all of a sudden, I was like, man, you know what? This ain't this stuff ain't funny. I shouldn't even be sitting around looking at this stuff. Because all it is is to try to show some mockery. Why don't you show some uh, Islam funny videos and what goes on on the mosque? Why don't you show some funny stuff that go on in Buddha City? They always, but they're always putting the stuff out there as a church to make it look, you know, uh, just comical. And I, I heard Pastor Lewis talk about this stuff, and that really that convicted me. Because when I was, I, I used to watch and look at it and stuff, and it was some. There's some crazy stuff on there, but I realize I say, you know what? No, nah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm done because it gets to the point where it's just it's just mockery. Just you put all them clips and stuff together. It's just mockery. But yet when you put all the clips together of, you know, the things that black people are doing, people going to call you self-hatred. You know, you you hate your race. That's all you do is show what black people are doing. But yeah, you can show uh, 30 some videos in a row about stuff happening in the church and, and think it's funny. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Okay, so anyway, yeah, so with, the, with this whole thing, again, like I said, the ones that's going to defend Ty Tribbett on YouTube, social media, whoever it is, all the ones that defend them, these are people that are not following Christ. These are people that, that, are, that, are, that, are, that, are, that are carnal, that like radio shows like The Breakfast Club and like secular radio shows where they can hear their R&B music and rock and roll music or whatever. These are the people that's, that, that's going to be that's going to be, you know, coming to his defense, especially in the, in those in that comment section. Just know the very ones that are out there defending, watch what they they going to be jump right on the bandwagon, the church bashing bandwagon. I've, I've always said this. Anytime that I'm sharing things on videos, I'm only talking about the ones that I'm talking about, and the Holy Spirit reveals to you exactly some of the the the, the, the things that I'm addressing and the, those who are walking in that pattern. And I will, I will, you know, say who it is or whatever. Or sometimes you may know ministers I don't know, or, or people that are doing stuff that I, I don't know and will never will know. But the things that the Spirit of God will, will will lead me with His Word to speak and address, you can identify with it. But I always say this: it, it ain't that don't mean it's, it's 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 every church, because a church in itself and stuff. You got thousands of ministries across this nation that are not doing this stuff, that are not doing foolish stuff. And guess what? A lot of those ministries are not the ones that's got the platform. A lot of them are not the ones that got the, you know, the huge numbers and stuff. Everybody want to say, well, the church got to start being the church. And the moment that people in the church and the pastors are doing the very thing that the Bible is talking about, you call them religious. 
You say they rigid. You say they unloving or they too judgmental now all of a sudden. Because they don't, they don't, they don't compromise with sin. They don't compromise with the world. They don't let the world tell the church how we're supposed to act and respond, how we're supposed to uh, uh, treat and address uh, people. They don't let the world tell the church that we need to have these, you know, uh, 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 gender affirming uh, roundtable discussions prone about pronouns and everything. All right. They don't let the world, they, they, the, 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 the body of Christ, uh, the church does not let the world dictate what we're supposed to be doing and how we're supposed to handle the scriptures when addressing the sins and abominations in these nations. All right. That's why the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the head of the church and the body. All right. That's why in Revelation, Jesus Christ says, I'm the head of the church. He holds the seven lampstands and the, and the seven stars, which represents the seven churches, because those pastors, those leaders are going to have to answer to him on how they treated the people of God in those churches. All right. So, um, just wanted to, uh, to share that because the stuff is ridiculous. It was absolute foolishness. And whoever goes on after him and after them and whatever, anytime that they're running to these shows, they're trying to rebrand themselves. They're trying to, you know, get themselves out there for their new uh, uh, venture or whatever. And they're trying to uh, uh, cater to the world. That's all it is. You think you're going to cater to the world in order to try to get them to come out to you so they can give you accolades and say that you like them, that they like you and all this other stuff. And they they appreciate you. They appreciate what you're doing for the community. Yeah, but are you going to repent? Are you going to repent and turn away from this radio station? Because Jesus Christ says, you know, what What? What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? And then dude Charlemagne will say, I'm, I'm, I'm here to speak up for my people. No, you're not. You ain't, you ain't speaking up for nobody. Because all you want to do is promote sin. Okay? See, as, as people in the body of Christ, we recognize that every race, nation, people group that calls upon the name of Jesus Christ, that believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, is born again by the Spirit of God, no matter what skin color they are, no matter what pigmentation they are, we will stand with our brothers and sisters in faith. We will stand with our brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, defend them. Pray for them, no matter what their skin color. We're not called to defend, you know, our race of people, the, 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 the skin tone that we that we dwell in. Isn't it something how you can get a glass of milk, a white milk, pour chocolate syrup in it, call it chocolate milk, but it's still milk, no matter what. So every race and stuff, no matter what, no matter what the skin color is, it's still human, human beings. They still have, our blood is still red. See, so all this differentiation and stuff like that when God created all races. So you trying to defend one race because you think it was oppressed and all this other nonsense and stuff, but you want to point the finger at another race. So I, I, I'm not going to go down that road because I dealt with that on other videos and stuff. Matter of fact, just the most recent one. But it, it's ridiculous. And it's respect the person. Okay? So when when, you know, I found it interesting that when uh, I think years ago, I saw when Louis Farrakhan went on the uh, Breakfast Club, I saw some clips of it and I noticed something that when he was on there, they put up all the alcohol bottles. There was no alcohol bottles on there at all. Kirk Franklin goes on there. They had a gay pride parade. They had excuse me, a gay pride uh, flag. They had alcohol bottles all up on it and everything. So just completely no regards. And then according to Kirk, get on there, dude, bashing the church, talking about his father, talking about all this other stuff. Okay. Doing all this, all this, all this nonsense. And so they had no respect for him because they had their liquor and everything and pride flags, all that other stuff, all up, uh, on there. But then they want to sit up there and wait when Ty Trevor come on there. And all of a sudden they want to talk about and 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 and, and uh, say something about the Bible or whatever. And, you know, it's, it's it's crazy. It's absolutely ridiculous. And again, any pastor, any person that's, that that confesses the name Jesus Christ, and any uh, uh, 
gospel musician that goes on The Breakfast Club, that goes on Good Morning America, that goes on, I don't know, Joe Rogan, or, that want to go on these shows. And, they, and it, it shows that they're compromising. They're already compromised. The moment that they say lights, camera, action, you on, or they get on that radio, the moment they utter that first word out of their mouth, they're compromising. Because I guarantee you one thing, you will never, ever see them confront these hosts to tell them to repent for their sins and turn to Jesus Christ. You will never see them quote the scriptures that's going to bring conviction to these hosts or to these talk show hosts, whatever, the interviewers, and tell them to come to Jesus Christ and repent. You'll never see them tell that. You know, Good Morning America got the 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 the, the uh, lesbian lady on there, and, and 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 Gail and all this other stuff, and and uh, you know, the Breakfast Club got somebody named the God. He calls himself God on there, and all this, all these different ones. You'll never see these people go. You never see these ministers or whatever these people are, that they say they people of God, gospel musicians or, or or pastors. You'll never see them go on their shows and tell them to repent for their sins. Or call out the works of the flesh. You'll never see them do it. Why? Because they're on there to compromise. They're on there to gain approval from the world. And that's what it is. We see it all in the word of God. We see it in the Bible. Anytime the apostles was, was confronted by the Pharisees and, and the Sanhedrin or whatever, they didn't compromise. They didn't stop mentioning the name of Jesus Christ and preaching repentance. All right? They never did. Even when they were withstood by certain people, by Jesus, and they still uh, uh, spoke the word. They preached and taught the word of God to lead souls into repentance. So when people have that opportunity, these guys don't take it because they're trying to save their brand. They're trying to rebrand themselves, reinvent themselves or whatever, or they're trying to gain another platform and gain another a bigger audience. Because it's about them. That's what it's about. And that's, that's what iniquity is. They want to draw men unto themselves. So in order to do that, you got to conform to this world. You got to yoke up with this world in order to do stuff like that. So I just want to take the time to share that, you know. So, because if it's in the word, it's in the word. God bless you. Amen.